Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, an architect at WinElect, and today we're going to be looking at how you can use blob storage with blob views, which allows you to mount blob storage into a virtual machine, which will allow you to do all kinds of things. So in this one, we're going to be looking at how you can use it to create a file sharing service based on Nextcloud. <laughs> Last time with Tech on Fire, we looked at how blob storage was an easy way to set up storage on Microsoft Azure and how you can store just about anything on there, anything from program output to files. And we did a simple demo where we used the AZ Copy utility to create a simple backup solution to move files from my local box up to Azure. And with that demo, we demonstrated how simple it was to create an Azure Blob Storage account, how easy it was to set up AZ Copy to actually do the backups, and how easy it was to use to use that simple utility to actually move files back and forth with the command line. And then there's other ones that you can we can use too, such as Azure storage explorer however there are some more advanced ways to do things on microsoft azure with blob storage and we're going to look at one of those today blob Fuse is a linux library that lets azure blob storage be mounted as part of the file system on a linux machine so that can be either in a local context or in the cloud so what this library does is installs on your linux machine and then with a simple command you can then mount your Azure storage account as as part of your file system and you can treat it just like you would any other part of your file system. You can copy files to it, you can read files from it, and it works very much the same way as just a regular directory on the file system. So this BlobFuse library opens up a number of possibilities within the Linux context. Uh, currently it's not supported on Windows, but with Linux you could create things like FTP servers, or you could create web servers where the content is hosted on blob storage, or you could create any number of things that use file access on the local file system, but the actual files be stored on an Azure storage account. I'm here in the Azure portal where I want to show you a little demo that I put together that shows you how you can use blob views for more advanced configurations with Azure blob storage. So in this a resource group, you can see that I have a virtual machine created and that virtual machine is called Nextcloud and it's hosting a instance of the Nextcloud app. If you're not familiar with what Nextcloud is, it's a self-hosted file sharing service similar to what you would get with Dropbox or OneDrive from Microsoft. And the app itself allows me to sync files between either my phone or my desktop and uh, then I can then share those files out to the internet from a web portal. So this virtual machine has the app installed and it also has blob views installed. And the blob views allows me to set up a folder inside of the virtual machine. Then I configured Nextcloud to point to that folder to write files to and read files from for the actual files that are being served up by my file sharing service. So with that in mind, I created this virtual machine and when I did, it actually created a storage account. So rather than create an additional storage account, I just repurposed this one to also serve as the place to hold the files for my instance of Nextcloud. And I created an additional container inside of my blob storage account. Now this boot diagnostic storage uh, container here has the, the boot diagnostics information for my virtual machine, but this backup here contains the actual data folder for uh, Nextcloud. And this is the root of that folder. So you can see it's creating a bunch of various uh, random files here. And then it's got uh, some app data folders and external files. This is the actual user I created. And it's this is the actual data user folder for the application. And then here are the files that are in that folder. And you can see here I've got documents, photos, and then several images. And these are the uh, files that I've synced with my local machine here. So if I pull up my local machine here, I should be able to show you where these files are on my local hard drive. 
So I'm going to come down here and click on explore and open up this folder here. And this folder is a mirror image of what is actually hosted on my blob storage account. So this is one end of it and this is the other. There's also a lot of stuff in between which is happening on the virtual machine. So these uh, files you can drill into and you can see that uh, I, these are the thumbnails and they have a little checkbox here indicating that those files have been synced up to blob storage which would be these jpeg images here so the desktop app that does that is this this app here and what i did is i just essentially configured this uh next cloud app to point to my local d source blob demo here and then connected it to that virtual machine and now the files can be synced so if i actually remove a file or remove it from the blob storage account or if i add a file it will sync that file up to uh, blob storage as well so this is a very convenient way to do that's just running in my system tool tray down there so let's go ahead and poke around on the virtual machine a little bit to show you what this might look like at the command line so here's the actual folder i have nextcloud installed in and uh, if i do a ls on this you'll see that it's the root folder and there's the data folder that contains the actual data for this uh, uh, particular instance of nextcloud now if i go ls if I, ls dash l you're going to see this this looks kind of odd because it, what's happening is blob views is a user land mount so it needs to be mounted with the user that is actually utilizing that particular folder. In this case, it's the www-data user, which is used by Nginx. So in order to list that directory, I, I would have to use sudo and then do a dash u and then type in www-data. And, and then I can run a command slay data and, um, and uh, get a list of files ls data not uh, just data and uh, that will show me the files there and if i want to get into that blaze folder uh, blaze one i can see the file uh, the file folders there and then if i wanted to see the actual images i could go into files and that would list those images that i have synced so you can browse the local file system here and see that it is actually mounted now the command to mount this is actually pretty straightforward. So I'm going to pop over to a text editor to show you what that command looks like. So here is my command that I actually used to create this with. Um, notice I'm running this as sudo dash w w dash data user. That's the same user I used to list the folders in that folder because the because this is a user land um library to mount a folder in the file system i have to run it as the user that's actually going to be utilizing that particular folder so in this case i used the www-data user to create blob views uh, to run blob views in order to create and uh, use that mount point at data so uh, with this to work you have to specify temp path which is just a temp directory because what the way this works is uh, it will download the file from blob storage operate on it in the local context and then once the file locks have been released on that file it will then take those changes and post them back to blob storage so it's using temp data to do that then you have to tell it which user id and, and, and gid to use that's just the same one with blob www-data and then some other options that i have uh, I have log levels up to debug. I have cache timeout to five minutes uh, or two minutes. And then I have this config file. And this is this config file is where I you specify the endpoint that you want to use. That's the storage account, the container. And then you need to specify some kind of key to access that particular blob storage account. So this is the magic that actually makes the linkage between um, your storage account and your virtual machine work. And once you have that, file mounted then you can configure nextcloud to use this folder right here for the data path so i'm going to open up my browser again and take a look at my instance of my nextcloud that i have running on this so here i'm back in the azure portal and i'm going to click on this tab and this is what nextcloud looks like and uh, nextcloud here uh, is just a simple file sharing service and uh, it allows me to drill down into any of those folders that I have. I'm logged in as the user that we just looked at since I only have one user on here. If I want to go up a folder, then I can you know, go back up to the root here 
and um, then I can look at the images here that I have uh, uploaded and synced and there's a, the mp4 file that pdf file that are also in that folder as well but this reading these from the actual fold uh, from the actual blob storage account so I wanted to share this out for instance I can come over here and uh, share this image if I if I so choose um, and get a link to it to download it or I can um, use Azure Blob Storage technically can do the same kind of thing, but this uh, way of using Blob Storage is uh, gives me a different approach to how I can use Blob Storage in many different ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this and I'm going to post a write-up about how I created the uh, Blob Storage, how I created the um, the mount point and then how I installed and configured uh, Nextcloud to use this. So I will link that in the description down below once I have that finished. But for now, this is going to wrap up this instance of Tech on Fire with Blaze. And thanks for watching. And I hope to bring you more videos about how you can use Azure for some very cool things like blob storage with Nextcloud. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.